It's Wednesday. Welcome to my layout this week for Chamel Sketches Reimagined. So before I forget, uh, my dear friend Christy Harriman, who is Christy's Beautiful Life on YouTube, she, uh, we were kind of bouncing off ideas for this sketch and she had a really good one. So she created a layout for this sketch too. Uh, so you can check her out on her channel and I will absolutely leave a link below. This is our sketch for today and I have a plan for it. So I'm gonna use nine photos and my plan is to take this block and do it like a square and make it a little bigger and kind of shorten this down a little bit. You'll see as I go along. I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not, but we're gonna try it. I have an idea in my head of what I wanna do. So here are my six pictures. And here's another part of my plan. I have two sheets of Coconut Squirrel Basil cardstock. Um, I have a six by six paper pad. This is the Cartabella Spring Market Collection. I also have the frames and tags that go with that collection. And then I have these super cute epoxy flare from Scrap and Happy Studios. These flare, I wanna say they're, I wish they're not on here. I think that they are um, from the last release. And uh, you can find them in the shop. They're just some black and white flowers. They see simply bloom. Perfect for what I'm going to be documenting, which are these photos of uh, my son and I. Every year we go flower shopping together. It's kind of our thing. I always end up taking gobs more photos at the greenhouse than I, I generally am able to scrapbook. So I'm really excited because I got to go through these photos and grab six of them for this page today. Okay, so I'm gonna get started in this layout and we'll see how it goes. So first thing I wanna do is take the branding strips off my background and then the other white sheet of cardstock. I'm going to cut it into a 10 by 10 square. The reason I'm gonna do this is because I'm going to proceed to then cover it up. You could actually probably go ahead and use a piece of pattern paper you don't like. Maybe you have some really old single-sided papers. You flip them over and, and cut it down, but you just want a 10 by 10 square of white paper. And then we're gonna cover that all up with a six by six papers. So what I did was I went through the six by six paper pad and I chose patterns that were, um, some that were small in size. So like this little one that has the wreath, the wreath, and then you can see that other one that has, um, like the, the little boots and the gardening implements. And then I also chose some papers that were more plain. So I chose like this green gingham and I chose like a peachy paper. Um, and so I'm gonna start with these three designs just like this and then I'm gonna flip the paper over. I'm gonna trim off the excess patterns and I'm gonna use those too. So for me, the most, uh, the best thing about Cartabella and Echo Park 6x6 paper pads is the fact that the papers are double sided. So you get a lot, you can get a lot of pattern out of, out of just a couple sheets of paper. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm taking those, the pieces of those three initial patterns that I uh, trimmed off and I'm using the backside of them to go ahead and fill in the extra area until I have this entire sheet of um, 10 by 10 paper covered in pattern. Next up, I'm going to decide where I want all of my photos. So I'm going to have six photos and then I'm also going to have three areas that are just going to be some pattern paper with embellishments and I'm going to put my journaling on one of those squares as well. But I'm gonna start by getting these photos kind of lined up where I want them. And then I'm gonna use my T-square ruler. You can see it down there across the bottom of the page. And what I did was, was I just turned the 10 by 10 paper, put the T-square ruler onto the edge, put my photos down and then turned it again so that I did the outside edge of the entire paper. And then I just have those two little pieces to put in at the end and it was really easy to do that. So I'm looking for some kind of tone on tone, simple basic patterns, kind of like this white shiplap, um, some of the wood grain, 
and those patterns are going to be what I use to fill in on those three spots on my grid. I also uh, went ahead and popped up one photo in each of those sections. So there's one at the top, one in the middle, one at the bottom that's popped up on foam squares, just to give it a little bit of added dimension. Uh, something a little different to keep your eye interested since we are dealing with a lot of pictures. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in these two squares now, just with the pattern paper, and then I'm gonna start going through my die cuts and figuring out which ones I wanna use. I have also pulled in one of the six by six patterns that has like a cut apart. And I'm gonna go ahead and give everything, I started without doing it, and then I'm gonna come back in and put uh, Distress Oxide Ink in Vintage Photo on the three squares, just to give them a little bit of added separation from the background. So now I wanna start um, getting the rest of my layout all together. There isn't much left to do. So I'm gonna follow the sketch fairly, um, fairly closely for this part. What I'm doing is I took the leftover paper from the three squares that I cut. I'm now cutting one inch strips from those squares from the leftover paper, the scraps. And uh, what that's gonna do is because these patterns are so nice and light and small they're going to line up perfectly and I can put three little border pieces down the right side of the page. I'm going to go ahead and just ink the outside edges of these strips and that will give the illusion that they are 12 inch strips instead of <laughs> um, six by six strips. While I had my trimmer out I also went ahead and grabbed that cut apart sheet and I'm going to cut three of the cut apart pieces and use them as kind of like the bases and also the journaling uh, for those three blocks. And then you can't even tell that those were six by six papers and not 12 by 12 strips. Pretty awesome. So next up, I am going to go ahead and ink up those three cut apart sheets get them where I'd like them to be, have an idea of where they're gonna be situated at. I'm gonna add my title. So these are thickers just from my stash. Um, I can't even tell you what line they were from. I wanna say they might be from Snow and Coco or Crepe Paper, a snow type line. Um, but I used them to my title right where it appears on the sketch kind of <laughs> and that's family traditions now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start by going ahead and doing my journaling and then I am pulling out the frames and tags pack and I'm just deciding how I want to kind of tuck these frames I, I wanted things to kind of interact with the edges and like this tag here, it just perfectly came down so it could interact with the title of the page, making the whole thing look very cohesive. I'm just gonna go through all of these bits and pieces and choose the ones that I really think are going to work well with my layout here um, and where I can kind of add and tuck. So again, I really like this tag with the little gum boots and I decide that I'm going to go ahead and tuck it under there and then have it interact with that photo down below to create these fun uh, clusters all through my layout. So I have the clusters mostly together here. I'm just going to add some of the epoxy flares that I have set aside. I love, love, love the pops of black and white in this collection. And so I knew I needed to use these black and white blooms from the epoxy flare. And then it worked out perfectly with my, the thickers I chose for my title. And I just really love how this layout came together so well. So now that I have my clusters all together, I'm going to put these die cuts away and I decide that I really want to add some Nouveau drops. I choose this little jewel color and my Nouveau drops were sticking. So they weren't coming out right and I just kept pressing them. I didn't know I stuck a needle down in there. They weren't, they weren't doing it right. It didn't want to come out and then, yep, that's right. Did you see that? Everywhere, that fast, those Nouveau drops exploded. 
it is all the Nuvo drops are all over my layout. Did you know Nuvo drops could travel that far? Um, everywhere. So, um, here are some good things to know if this should happen to you. Immediately grab a baby wipe, ever so gently clean off all of the Nuvo drops and it will work out fabulously. And then I chose another, I was mad at those Nuvo drops, so I chose a new color and I went back in and I put on my Nuvo drops and my layout dried <laughs> and you can't tell that there was ever a Nuvo drop explosion. I can even believe how fast those Nuvo drops, they just exploded and they just went everywhere. Oh, but anyway, easily fixed. FYI, should your Nuvo drops explode, uh, just grab a baby wipe right away and ever so carefully wipe it up. I would also suggest that um, you might just want to reprint your pictures if your pictures aren't from a photo. These were from Persnickety Prints and they were fine, but I think if I had printed the pictures, it wouldn't have gone as well. If it had been ones I had printed at home, it probably wouldn't have worked out that well. All right, guys, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.